Hey, I'm Shane Smith. I'm here with Thomas, uh, and we're here on an episode of Mind Matters, Navigating Head Injuries and Concussions. Thomas is one of the attorneys of the Concussion and Brain Injury Group here at Shane Smith Law. Thomas, we're going to talk today about um, impacts of a concussion. What specifically are we talking about? Chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Now, that's a whole mouthful, yes. obviously, is that? Uh, and, and I know they abbreviated CTE, and now I know why, because that sounds difficult to say, and... and Probably difficult to understand. What what is that? What what is what is CTE? Yeah, it's something that's kind of come to light through you know different sports and uh, different studies that that we've had uh, that have resulted from some incidents in sports. Uh, you know, Javon Belcher from the Kansas City Chiefs. That was a, a big incident that happened. You know, some time ago he ended up uh, you know suffering from CTE uh, and. Uh, you know, killing himself, killing his family, and uh, you know, raised a lot of questions about what the heck is going on with these different athletes in sports where these seemingly bizarre things are happening because there's no history with him. Uh, current, uh, CTE, it's a de degenerative brain disease. Okay. And it's associated with repeated head traumas. So degenerative means it's gonna con it's gonna get worse over time, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know couple impacts over time they add up create this cumulative effect where you know you're rapidly degenerating in brain function. Now I, I've always heard that once you've had one concussion you're more likely to get another one um, just because I guess your brain is it's more fragile so this is the multiple concussions is definitely what leads to this or makes it much more likely to occur. Yeah it just repeated head trauma uh, you know create having that cumulative effect uh, you know that couple years down the road you know you've aged in terms of your brain health you know by decades years so um, like boxers football players or just some of those unlucky people I mean I know a guy who honestly had been in I think 15 car wrecks by the time he was like 25 you know and he's like yeah three concussions and four you know three three concussions two broken arms you know yeah I mean he was just a train wreck for for car accidents um, but but those multiple concussions they don't have to be close in time together, I guess, is what we're talking about. Right, yeah, they don't have to be close in time to each other, and you know, they might not even show up uh, on someone's radar as being a concussion. I know, you know, in the NFL specifically, uh, it's, you're seeing it in offensive linemen, and you know, offensive linemen aren't getting tackled. They're having that, you know, ball get snapped, they're popping up, and they're having a collision with somebody, but they're not getting popped in the head, that's a penalty. Right. They're okay. just getting a big acceleration, deceleration force. And over time, you know, these guys are, you know, turning 50 and everyone around them, you know, thinks they're 70 or 80 years old. Huh. So it, it can be the mild concussions or even the mildest of concussions can lead to this if you have it time after time after time. Yeah, yeah, it can uh, definitely add up. It doesn't have to be a, a big impact. It can, it can be something smaller. Um, they even call it the silent killer, and that's because the symptoms of this, the CTE, they don't, you know, usually appear until years or even decades really? after the initial so injuries no, happen. So, so what exactly is CTE? What, what happens and what's it cause? Or what are this? Let's go down to what are the symptoms? Of, what happens when I've got CTE years later? Right? What? What is the killer? What's triggering? What's going on? One of the things that might put it on your radar that someone might be suffering from CTE could be memory loss, confusion, yeah. uh, impaired judgment. There might be impulse control problems. So is that like today or is that like 20 years from now when that stuff would all kick yeah, in? Yeah, it could all kind of kick in uh, 20 years down the road. It could be years from the time that somebody was playing a sport or being involved in car accidents. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things. It's uh, we're just scratching the surface of this. So that sounds horrible. I mean, horrifying, honestly. I mean, you could think you're fine, and then 20 years later, bam, and find out it's from something years years prior. I guess the only thing you can look out for is if you're having multiple concussions. You, you know, make sure you're thoroughly checked out and everything is tested, and, and just know there's going to be some symptoms. To know you can't just shake off your third or fourth concussion. Right. Yeah, and uh, you know, making sure that your coaches or you know different people around you, friends and family, are, are kind of monitoring those things. And you know, in any contact sport these days, this is something that can be a risk. You know, we think about football, we think about UFC, yeah, MMA, you know, different things like that. But I mean, even a sport as low contact as soccer, you know, it's yeah. these guys are jumping up and whacking the ball with their heads, and uh, you know, that that can and, cause. And that's enough. Yeah, uh, can definitely. Could definitely do it. Uh, 
you know, the, the more we talk about concussions and, and brain injuries and, and stuff, the, the more frightening it is to me, honestly. You know, when we talk about the, the massive head injuries, okay. But then when we, we step, take a step back from that and we go to these, quote, minor head injuries, you know, and, and we learn about the symptoms and all the stuff that can happen from that minor head injury, it's, it's frightening to me because those aren't, those aren't the things you think about. You know, when I hear somebody had a head injury, Initially, I'm thinking the guy who went to the hospital who's got to do rehab, all that stuff. They're not the person who goes, maybe this is their third concussion, you know, because they had one playing football and one playing soccer, or they fell once and now they're in a car wreck. All relatively mild, and now they've got all these symptoms, right? And we're worried about things like CTE or, or other stuff. What else would you tell us about CTE? Yeah, I think, you know, again, we're scratching the surface of it, and there's lots of studies that are out there. Uh, a lot of it, um, you know, is going to come to light, you know, over the next few years and maybe decades as, as we continue to find different ways to evaluate what's happening to our brains just through everyday living and contact sports, different things like that. Um, you know, protect, having the right protective equipment, you know, if there's any parents out there, people are like, oh, man, I don't want, I don't want to have my children involved in anything, you know. Yeah. You know, or, you know, put them in a bubble and, hey, let's just, you know, sit at home and look at screens all day. You know, I, I don't know that that's the right answer. I know that's not the right answer, yeah. but there's definitely new equipment that's out there that teams, different sports are using to help minimize these risks. Uh, you know, if you're an NFL fan and you're watching any of the training camp stuff, you're wondering why the football players look like Marvin the Martian out there yeah. from the Flintstones with massive helmets. They've got these big bubble, I think they call them guardian helmets. I saw something everywhere. about that. There were... Some people are making a push for everybody to wear guardian helmets like all the time. Yeah, right? yeah, like during the games, and it, it would look like uh, it would look like some kind of video game out there. But I, I guess that's not what it looks like. Isn't the most important thing? It's how it protects somebody. Uh, you know, when we talk about the evolving standards of safety, uh, when I was a kid, we didn't wear bicycle helmets. Right. Yeah. You know, we just did whatever. And I can remember probably being in high school, bicycle helmets were suddenly the new thing. Right. And my mom trying to tell me, "Hey, you need to wear a helmet." I'm like, "Yeah, whatever, mom." <laughs> You know, uh, nobody's wearing helmets or anything else. You know, yeah. I mean, we didn't even have the option for any modified helmets. It was just this piece of styrofoam. It seemed like, right. uh, but now they're pretty common. Everybody expects to wear them when they ride the bicycles and stuff, right? So yeah. Maybe when we get my daughter on her little scooter, we got a little helmet for her. You know, it's it's not like she's okay. falling off or going high speeds, but you know, you 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 want to protect your kids. You want to protect their little skulls. So. Yeah. What else? Anything else you would tell us about CTEs or? Uh, Things to look out for in that area? Yeah, it's. I mean, it's a rare condition from what we know right now. And a lot of what we found out when somebody has CTE comes from some sort of volatile or, you know, kind of impulsive or explosive event is one of the ways. You know, you see people degenerate, but then you also see some impulse control things. So a lot of what we know comes from study of essentially like a cadaver. You know, somebody okay. after they've passed and we're looking inside their brain and we're seeing the accumulation of abnormal proteins. So, so finding a way to figure out how to do this while someone's living and monitor that ongoing disease process in terms of a brain injury, I think that's maybe the next frontier is how do we, how do we monitor what's going on with someone? And maybe that's that blood test. I was going to say, we talked about the blood test. That's what it makes me think of. But I mean, you know, the more I learn about that blood test, the more I think it's going to become almost standard procedure for like our high-end athletes, for UFC, for football, and, and even I could see it's something the emergency room started doing after every major car accident. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I guess it's just more and more knowledge is what we learn, right? Yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those things that you know, we might be talking here today about it, and, and we think we are starting to get a grip on it. And a week from now, we, we find out something that completely transforms the way we think about it. That's how new this brain science is. So no longer is it you just have a concussion, though, right? That's that's not the right phrase anymore, because we've figured out there's just a concussion is a ton of other things, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's really too simplistic, and it, it doesn't really, uh, I, think, I think the word kind of does a traumatic brain injury you know, almost an injustice because concussion, we think about concuss, we think about an impact, we think about a force. And again, you don't, you don't have to have that direct blow. It can be acceleration, deceleration forces. All right, Thomas, uh, thanks for, for being on this episode of Mind Matters. Uh, for anybody who's interested in concussions and brain injuries, hit like and subscribe. And uh, remember, hit the bell for notifications. And if you've got a question or concern or you are in an accident or su think you're suffering from a brain injury or concussion, and need to talk to somebody like Thomas, just give us a call. 
Uh, you can call us at 980-999-9999. You can ask for Thomas. And remember, if you're in pain, call Shane. In pain, so I call Shane. 980-999-9999. In pain, call Shane.